Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, this is uh, Substance Player, and I open up the file that uh, that belongs to this uh, video. It's the iTaxi Generation version 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, I encountered an error in the first release, so I changed that and fixed it. Um, when you open up this file with the Substance Player, which you can also use Substance Painter or Substance uh, Sampler. In this case, I'm going to use the Substance Player because it's freely available. Um, you can uh, see what we got here is uh, is a different texture maps which you can use in the shaders. And uh, here are the settings for the size. It's on 512 right now, but you can change it to 2K. Usually, 2K is sufficient for eyeball textures because you never go all the way into the eyes unless you want that. Turn it up to say like 4K or maybe even 8K. Um, it's all procedural, of course, so it scales pretty nice. Um, let me set this to 1K so you can actually see what we're doing here. So when you open up, you can see that we have this texture here. Uh, we've got a normal map going with it. This is, of course, the albedo or diffuse color. Uh, we got the roughness. Um, it doesn't display it well in the 3D view because there's a, a bug for a while now uh, inside Substance Player which doesn't display roughness. And there's a metallic in case you need it. You don't always need it, but it's there anyway. Um, we've got a height map, of course, which is uh, useful. And we've got an ambient occlusion map with it as well. Um, there's a parallax uh, output as well, because you can use this one in uh, the real-time ice setup, which you use for uh, in, in, uh, instead of, uh, oh, well, you use it inside of Marmoset to actually fake uh, refraction. There's an iris uh, normal map that goes with it. These two are related. Uh, cornea normal map to break up the reflections in the, in the eyeball, and the cornea roughness, which does the same, of course. And there is an emissive. Uh, the emissive is black right now because I don't have any things that produce light. But when I change this thing to cyberpunk set of setting, then you can see what it does. You get the uh, light information out of it. So let me turn it up a bit. So it gives this as a light information. When I change to the Terminator one, it's different, of course, because you can see here that it produces like emissive color. So that's why it's in there. Going back to uh, another setup, um, let me turn this one up. Um, there's several things in here which you can use to create your own eyes. Of course, there's the randomize, which produces like unique uh, layouts and designs of all the elements that are inside the eye texture. Um, I put the slider on the random sheet uh, over here to actually be able to save the presets with the random uh, number in there. Um, looking at here, we can change the pupil width and the height so we can produce more cat like eyes or create a bigger pupil. Um, let me turn this back to 100. And we have a slider here to actually create uh, an hourglass. It was like with gold eyes and stuff like that, or creatures. <clears throat> Looking at the scarla, which is the, the eye white, um, you can uh, pull up, turn up the saturation so it will get more red, or you can turn it down to actually eliminate color in there. There is also a slider for blood paints, so we can produce more. Um, and there is a slider to actually influence the eye white, because when you use eyes for darker people or people with darker skin, um, the eye white tends to be more yellow. So that's in there as well. And we have here the iris, which has two, a couple of sliders to influence uh, that element as well, so you can really turn it up scale it up. You have a border here which you can darken and there is uh, also a slider for extra veins inside of the iris. Um, 
and Snyder influences the second layer in the iris, which is called the stroma. And I have a slider for the transparency of that element as well. Um, there is a blindness slider, a slider over here, which creates this effect inside the eye. It doesn't represent it correctly here because of the metallic influencing the rendering here. But um, you can see in the other example that I created that it works pretty well. Um, here you can see all the colors you can play around with. I'm going through this with the presets, like uh, with like the light blue eye, you can see the metallic things in here. Um, you can with green eyes or brown eyes. Not well, but actually the possibilities are infinite. These presets are in here, like a yellow cat eye or uh, a green cat eye with slightly bigger iris. Um, there's the goats, and there is this cyberpunk thing. Um, I put the cyberpunk thing in there actually for fun, but um, you can see the colors here are really into the theme. And uh, there is a button here, a section, it's called sci-fi, and it has uh, actually uh, two buttons and a couple of things on here. But there's um, a crosshair which you can turn on. Um, if you touch this one, you get like a Terminator eye with the with color of the Cyber, uh, cy cyberpunk eye, but you can change the emission color here. As you can see, this is not the same as the Terminator eye, which is here, because I changed the iris size. Um, looking at this one now, I can let me turn up the resolution. There's a, there's actually a couple of panels, and uh, there's a piece of text here which you can change here. And you can say, like, hello. It's not that quick because it needs to refresh in there, but it works. Um, and you can actually move it with the coordinates here. Uh, this shader isn't meant or built to uh, use in a real-time environment, but it's really generated for other texture maps. Use. So it's not optimized to use in like game engines and stuff like that. It might work if you keep it in a low setting, but um, yeah, I think I've seen everything. Yeah, I did. Uh, so this is actually uh, about the yeah. There's one thing I can mention is that the, the cyborg is just one button. Maybe in the future I'll uh, provide some more uh, sliders. Actually, play play around with that one as well. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to tell you and explain about how the shader is set up. Oh yeah, and of course, if you're done with your design, you can export the maps uh, in several formats to use in your projects. That's it. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.